Hey guys, this is Maru again. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a necklace using the watercolor technique. This technique I learned from Jessima Tutorials. She has an awesome channel. Check out her videos. Um, I already conditioned my clay. I'm using white Primo and black, black Primo. I conditioned this on the thickest setting on my pasta machine. And I'm going to roll this again on the th third thickest setting of the pasta machine. Everybody has a different setting, so my pasta machine is like a number three. So I'm going to roll this again one more time. And that's what we're going to get. I'm going to be using acrylic paints today for this first part of the tutorial. I'm going to be using Deco Art Extreme Sheen Metallics Pink Tourmaline. If I'm pronouncing this correct. Um, the next color is um, also from Deco Art. And it's Dazzling Metallics and the color Berry. The next color is Extra Sheen again. Extreme Sheen again in color Garnet, and the last one is White Pearl, also from Deco Art Metallics. These are really, really beautiful colors. You're going to need a... I always, I always use a plate so I can apply my, my paint, because I don't want to apply it on the tile. And you're going to need a paintbrush. Then make sure you shake your bottle really, really good. And apply it on the plate. Just a little bit on the plate. And you're going to do um, small strokes. And apply it on the, on the paint. Just small strokes. Make sure you don't apply too much. Sometimes when you apply too much paint, it tends to take longer to dry and it just looks really like chunks. So just apply a little bit at a time. Really thin coat. Really, really thin coat. Make sure you um, clean your brush in between colors. Use a uh, wet wipe. And the next color we're going to be using is the color berry. And apply it on the plate again. And go just do the strokes on the clay. This technique is really, really easy. There's not a lot to it. Really easy steps. It's okay if you overlap it a little bit on on the other color. And then depending on what color you're trying to get, you're gonna get, like this is, if you wanna get more red, you will have to apply more of this berry color, depending, or if you don't want too much, you don't apply like that much. So it's just depending on what color you're trying to achieve. So just make sure you're clean. I'm gonna apply the next, the other colors and i'll be back for the next hey guys step. i'm back so i'm finishing applying the the rest of the colors on the clay and this i'm doing the um white pearl and uh, you have to make sure this is really really dry before applying anything on this on top of this um, if you don't let it if it's not dry completely and then it will cause problems so make sure this is dry completely and um, I'll be back to show you what I'm doing next see you in a little bit hey guys so this is completely dry and now we're gonna be applying the metal leaf speedball in color gold we're going to apply it on top of this clay. We're going to open the package. 
make sure everything windows and you don't have any fan going on because this stuff will fly everywhere I mean, it sticks everywhere so just make sure you apply this very very gentle and make sure when you apply you know that it's going to be on right there because if you try to move it it won't it won't come off it just it sticks now I'm gonna cut the excess on the side you just have to be very gentle with this because it's really really hard I'm just cutting the sides here and I'm gonna lift it up I'm gonna cut the other side now And there's just applying on the side that didn't get the the, um, the leaf. Just gonna apply some pieces of it. Because the metal uh, leaf was not long enough. But anyways, I'm gonna put it back. And I can use it for another project. I'm just going to cut this excess and use it again for something else. And just try to cut some of it and just try to cover as much as I can, not leave any spaces. And just push it a little bit and just rub it with your fingers just a little bit try to be gentle with it yeah this sticks will stick to your fingers everywhere so you have to be very very gentle with this uh, foiled now I'm gonna be using a um, translucent clay on this to put it on top of this because you will have to protect this um, if you want to uh, you have to put it on top so I already conditioned the translucent clay on my um, thinnest setting on my pasta machine you have to protect this um, I remember I forgot one time I didn't do it and then it came off like the whole leave it was just when I was um, you all, you always have to put, uh, put a um, thing of translucent on top, and then I'm gonna cut the um, excess translucent on that side. I'm gonna do the other side too. And you also have to make sure there's no bubbles on this clay because this bubbles will rise to the top when after you bake it and that's not something that you want to have on your clay so I'm just gonna cut the excess on the sides and I'm going to make sure there's no bubbles um, you can just pop them I mean cut them with the with a blade and just get rid of them you really want to make sure you do this before you bake your pieces and then when you're sanding them you can get rid of them um, a little bit but they're still gonna you can still be able to feel them it's gonna be there so I was saying when if you don't put the translucent on top of this when you're trying to sand this Unless you don't want to sand it, but if you want to sand it, the metal leaf will come off. So I'll be back and show you what I'm going to do next. Hi guys, I'm back. So I'm um, getting rid of some of those bubbles that popped on the surface. And um, I'm just going to trim some of the excess on the sides. And... I'm going to roll this 
on the pasta machine on the thicker setting which is a number one in my pasta machine and then after that I'm gonna roll it on the third thicker setting on my pasta machine every pasta machine is different it depends how um, thick you want this how thin you want this some sometimes I want it like really thick thicker or thinner so it depends so just roll it through and this is what you're gonna get it's, a, it's quite thin not too thin and I'm just gonna cut some of the excesses on the sides just get rid of that and then we're going to tear this in small pieces it doesn't have to be in a particular order we're just gonna tear it and we're gonna make a sheet off um, of these just gonna break a little uh, tear little pieces of this and um, we're gonna make a sheet of um, clay I'm gonna put it on top of each other and this is really easy this is the fun part when you have to worry about um, tearing the clay most of the time so I'm gonna finish this and I'll be back when I'm um, done with all this hey guys so now um, I tore some of the pieces and we're gonna form um, make a sheet of clay just put it on top of each other in random places don't have to worry about anything just put it on top um, it's pretty much what you're gonna do with this right now at the moment and then just put it on top it doesn't have to be in a particular shape make sure they are stuck in there because after that I'm gonna roll it um, I'm gonna come back when I'm done with this hey so I'm going to roll this um, with my roller you can leave it like this but I'm gonna make it flat somehow with the roller just place it on the tile grab your roller and you're gonna roll this in different directions up and down should be very gentle with this sometimes this thing tends to stick to the roller and I don't know because of the weather here in Florida but this happened before and and ripped but just be very gentle with it up and down you know I'm gonna roll uh, roll this through the pasta machine too but you're gonna do this with the roller first so you can feel it that is flat and when you feel that it's ready you are going to pick it up with your blade just be very careful careful like I say this somehow this sticks to the tile I don't know why just be very careful picking it up and you're gonna put it through the pasta machine on the thickest setting which is the number one and on the pins how thick I'm sorry how thin you want this I'm gonna roll it and you can see it and then I'm gonna roll it again um I think it's the third thickest setting and then I think I'm rolling it again because I was uh, quite happy with the how thin it was so I roll it one more time so it just depends how thin you want this so this is what you're gonna get so it's quite thin and you can see the foils it really really looks really pretty so after this I'm going to show you what's next for the part of the tutorial and I'll be back for that see you then hey I'm back so I'm gonna show you um, this second part of the tutorial I'm gonna be making a mica shift 
I have three colors there I mix one is bronze and I mix one part of bronze one part of copper and half of one part of all soldering and I mix them all together and came up with this color I'm going to get a use uh, you can use any stamp I'm using this stamp I can't remember who this stamp is from I'll just put it in the link below and I'm gonna give it a spray with water make sure you do that if not else it's just gonna stick to the clay and you can also use cornstarch and place this uh, the clay on top of the stamp and I like to use the sponge because I you can use your fingers too but I think the sponge I'm more in control of it like rolling it it's just I think it just stays in there so this is just a, um, a cosmetic cosmetic sponge just roll it in one direction up and down and do it again make sure you cover all the areas and then you're going to uh, roll it again in a different direction it's really easy to do I find it by um, using the sponge and you should make sure that way you get all the areas because if you don't press really hard and then you won't get it now pick it up and very gentle and just that's what you get make sure you um, wipe the water excess from the clay and I'm gonna just make sure you dab all the water that's around it because once you start shaving it you don't want to have water on that now you're gonna pick up your blade and I'm gonna just trim the excess around it on the sides I'm just gonna show you what comes next okay so now we are um, shaving the mica shift and make sure you have a uh, flexible blade and your hair's, hands are resting on your work surface. You're gonna have to do this very slowly and start shallow at first because if you go too deep, you might gonna have to start all over again. So you gotta have a lot of patience to do this technique. Uh, it takes a lot of practice. And if you mess up, you can always start all over again. So you can save this little pieces that you have and use it for another polymer clay project um, or just keep it for your scrap clay so they go very slow and because um, if you go too deep and then it's gonna, cause, it's gonna cause problems on this so I'm gonna finish this up and I'll be back to show you what I'm doing next Hey, so now I'm going to flat uh, flatten this pattern. Um, I'm going to be using um, printing paper on top of it. I don't like to use it in my roller because it makes it like it sticks to it and it makes it too thin. So I'm just going to use this and do it like really smooth. Don't do it too hard. You don't have don't roll it. That's what I do. I mean, I've seen other people using the rollers. That's fine if you want to do that. But I don't like to do that. And there's an area on that um, in there that I went, I went too deep. I guess I was rushing. And you can see that it's um, it's not as smooth as the, as the other side. But that's fine. I mean, you can still use it. But I'm pretty happy with it. It's um, smooth. And now I'm going to condition some black um, Primo so I can start doing, getting all the, the pendant ready. So I'll be back to show you what's next. Hey, so I already conditioned this Primo on the third thicket sitting on my pasta machine. 
Then I'm gonna bring over the veneers, the watercolor, and the mica shift. And I'm going to cut a piece of each. First, I'm gonna cut one from the mica shift. And then I'm going to um, place it on the black primo. And I'm gonna cut a, another piece from the from this one from the watercolor and put it next to the mica shift. And they have to be on the same thickness because if you don't have it, like they're not the same thickness, when you bake it, it's not gonna look even. So you have to make sure because one is thicker than the other one. So you have to make sure when you're doing the back, the backing, it has to match the two veneers. So they have to be on the same level. I'm gonna bring a piece of paper and I'm gonna smooth out the middle everywhere. It's making sure, so I wanna make sure it's connecting. So smooth it out, go around it. Let's do it a couple more times. Let's <clears throat> just smooth it out really good in the middle because you don't want to leave a gap in there. And that's, um, I'm going to go to the next step and um, I'll be back. See you in a little bit. Okay, so now that I got the two veneers together. We're going to be um, using this nettle skin and we're going to be putting it in the middle of the two veneers. Um, just be very gentle with it when you put it on, on this. <clears throat> and just don't do it too hard. So I'm going to be finished here and then I'll be back to do the next step. Hey, so I'm back. Now that I have, uh, I have placed the veneer uh, in the middle, now I'm about to cut this. I'm using this cutter that I bought from Amazon. It's a full ball shape. It's really great. I'm just gonna place it in the center and just find the, the spot that you like and just gonna put it in the center and using two hands just press down you don't have to press too that too hard i really like this cutter because you don't have to you know press on too much and it cuts really fast really easy um we're just gonna get that out of the way and I'm going to bring over the printing paper and we're going to smooth the cane um, in the middle. Just smooth it out. Sorry, that's not on the shot, but smooth it out with your fingers. Really good. And just... Do you feel um, happy with it? Just want to like really smooth. Don't do it too hard. Just do that. Do you get? So you're happy with the? If it's pretty much flat. That way, when you're sanding it, you don't have to sand it too much. And then make sure you smooth out the everywhere on like go around it and just smooth it out I'm just gonna pick it up and then clean the the edges just clean the edges anything that's like excess on the side and we are um, 
going to bake this for 30 minutes, Primo's recommendation temperature, and I'll be back. Hey, so um, the beets already came out of the oven, and I already conditioned this Primo clay, and I gave her texture with the sanding paper. Now I'm gonna place, I'm gonna turn it, uh, turn it over, and going to place the bead right there in the middle. Well, not in the middle, on the side, and I'm gonna cut it. Cut all the excess to keep it close to the, the shape. And I'm just gonna cut it. Cut it on the top. I could have cut it with the cutter, but too late for that. And I'm going to use uh, liquid clay and just put a little bit on the back of the bead to make it, um, to bond it so it sticks. And I'm using a female liquid clay. You can use any other brands you like. And we're gonna pick up the black primo and place it on the bead, on the back of the bead, with the texture part facing up. And then make sure it's, um, make sure you press it down really good. And just gonna cut a little bit more on the sides so it's close to the shape to that focal shape just cut a little bit more and just gonna bring the side over to the bead just Gonna bring it over to the side, and I'm just gonna have to do this several times until you get to the right, um, until you get it closer to the edges. I'll be back and do the next step. Hey, so now I'm giving it some texture on the edges, just working my uh, weight around it. With the sanding paper, just go around it. And making sure you get it. Do you get do you're happy with the texture? And I'll also do the back. Because I already um did give it texture before, but because you're using you know with your fingers going around it, you're gonna lose some of it. So just make sure you do the back too. And then keep going around until you're happy with the with the texture. It's just really easy. Um, I'm sure that this is not on the shot. I apologize for that. I just need to make sure that I center this. Anyway, so I think that's pretty much. I'm happy with it, and. Um, Um, I guess I'm going to um, bake this um, for one hour at pre-mill recommended temperature, which is 275. And then after that, I'm going to sand it and show you how to resin this. See you in it. See you in a little All bit. Right, so I'm back. Um, I have this uh, piece has already been baked. And I already sand this, and I'm getting ready to put the resin. And I'm using Ultra Dome UV Epoxy. And this is one part resin. You're gonna need that. You wanna need a lighter and a toothpick. So 
we are going to star on the edges first. You don't need to apply too much. And just start applying it on the center. And that's enough for now. <clears throat> now with the toothpick, you're just going to move it just a little bit towards the edges. And just be very careful you don't want to spill it and just drag it all over like to the edges this is kind of hard for me to see because I can't see very good Just try to and I'm supposed to get a um, silicone mat I don't have one right now so I'm using this piece of um, carton that I have but I know I have to get a silicone mat which is preferable when you're working with resin so there's going to be some bubbles that are going to pop on the surface and just make sure you have it all in the middle and there is I see a few bubbles and then you're going to grab And you're going to pop in with this lighter. And that's all you have to do. And I'm going to put this under the light for about 20 minutes. And then I'll be back. Hello. So I'm back. Um, I already resined this and now I'm getting ready to put, um, put the cord. I have a uh, suede cord. I got my bail. I'm going to use jump rings. This is a lobster clasp and I got a hand drill. And my pliers and I got this core and crimps now I'm gonna make this hold in the middle right here on the top not in the middle right here on the top just get the shot here Just gonna twist it.
Okay, now we're gonna attach uh, the jump ring. I don't know the size of this, but this is a big one. And I'm just gonna open it up. And then attach the belt. And then I'm gonna close it. Close this up. We're going to um, uh, place this at the end of the cord. This is the core and crimps. And I'm just gonna make sure it's in there. And then we're gonna close it with the plier. Make sure you close it really, really tight. And I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to do the same thing. Just make sure it's um, it's in there. I'm just going to close it. So that's pretty good. It's pretty tight in there. I'm just going to get this through here. Get this out of the way. Now we're going to attach our lobster clasp. We just, oh, I need this again. And this is a small jump ring. I don't know the size, and so we're just gonna put this in here and then attach this. And then we're gonna close it. And I'm doing it on the other side. Gonna open this up. Okay, so there we go. This is the necklace. And I'm gonna bring over another necklace that I made. This one I made and it's it's blue. So I did a different I use um, blue paints. And I use a different um, texture stamp. So 
So there you are. All right, so I hope you like my tutorial and um, please um, like my video and subscribe. And I hope I see you in the next video. Bye.